Hello everybody, this is A7X Man Ben. Today I'm going to be opening a pack of Rise of the Fiends. This is the first um, set where they use the Pirates of the Cursed Seas name and the pocket model game name. So they changed the name of the game a bit. They had a legal battle with uh, Wizards of the Coast around the Constructible Strategy game name, which is what I call it. But And this is also one of the worst sets in my survey. It was regarded, I think it had the least amount of votes for favorite set, and then it might have also had the most amount of votes for least favorite set. So this might be the least popular set ever. Um, it introduced uh, the Scorpion ships, which are arguably the worst ship design that WizKids made. You can see one on the cover here. It actually is based on a drawing that Leonardo da Vinci made, but they were... Uh, I'm pretty sure they never sailed anything remotely close to it. Um, it's, it has a very red, um, like a theme. The cards will be red, as you'll see. And then it's also the pack is kind of interesting because they started doing, uh, I think they started in the Caribbean set, which was the previous set. They started, the packs are a little bit different on the inside. They're not as nice and they, they smell a little bit different. And then they're just a different, a little bit different like material on the inside of the pack. And this is the 11th set released out of 13 total. So let's see what we have here. So the first ship is actually a really good one, Aberdeen Baron. The ship is rare English Five Master, and it's unique because it's one of the only English Gold Runners that's larger. That's definitely not a gunship. It's definitely a Gold Runner. You can see the guns are pretty mediocre or not very good. The cargo is good, the speed is decent, and the ability um, pretty much guarantees that it's going to be a, a gold ship when combined with those other stats. And then the flavor text supports this too. English fleet has spread across the ocean as England continues to widen its empire, and the Aberdeen Baron has seen more ports than most. So this is actually one of the best English gold runners in the game. Uh, it's a really good ship, and even looks like a merchant ship because you can't really see cannons. Um, cannon ports on the hull and whatnot. It has a nice clean look, nice sails, and everything like that. So this is actually one of the better ships in the set. The set, uh, the actual ships and crew in the set were pretty decent. I would say the following set, Rise of the Fiends, was actually worse, but the set has been kind of taken apart because the Scorpion ships were so uh, ridiculed, even to this day, to a degree. And then second ship, HMS Merlin. This is a, another English ship. This one's not nearly as good. It's kind of generic. You may have seen it in my English uh, ships video. The cargo is pretty tiny and the ability doesn't really help her because she's only nine points. The English already have a lot of good name crew and with two card spaces, you can't really put that many crew aboard anyway. But with a Captain Helmsman, 14 points, you have a reasonable support gun ship. Nothing special though, pretty average ship or a little bit below average. And then we have a Pirate Explorer here with the rest of the coins. They did change the crew artwork too, starting, um, pretty much starting in this set. So they started doing unique crew artwork for the generic crew for the first time, which I'm kind of used to the old ones, so I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of old school, so I kind of like the other ones. I like the old pictures better, but it is kind of cool to see unique pictures for all the different generic crew. Here's a reef. Okay, so this is one of the weirdest things about this set. The islands are, you can see the water is like red, which is very strange. I don't know if it's supposed to be like bloody, but, and it fits in with like the red theme of the set, but this is probably one of the biggest turnoffs from like an aesthetic perspective, because if you use these islands in a game, especially if you use like a blue background, like the sheet here, um, it just looks absolutely terrible, in, at least in my opinion, and uh, it's pretty strange. I don't think they should have changed the islands just because the set is kind of like a red theme. The other weird thing is, it's called Rise of the Fiends, and the Cursed play like a decent role in the set, but the Scorpion ships that are featured, there's only a few of them. There's only about four regular ones, and then one super rare one, and uh, so there's not very many, and then almost all of them stink, so they're not really worth using in the game. So it's the theme is just, it's overrated because they didn't, they barely used any Scorpion ships, and then the ones that they did use, uh, they, they're not very good. So it doesn't really make much sense. And then here's, um, this is just like an ad for the super rare pack basically saying that you should want to get it. And then 
which this was the set where the super the super rare pack was really common compared to in other sets. It might have been the most common super rare pack along with uh, Savage Shores, the last set. And then this one, this one is a lot more rare. The Spectre, it's one of only two glow-in-the-dark ships in the entire game. The other one came from this set as well, but it's a mega card, so it didn't come in packs. It only came in plunder packs. The Delusion, it's a 10-masted junk for the Cursed. And then this one is glow-in-the-dark as well, the Spectre. I don't have the Spectre yet. It's one of my most wanted ships, but it's pretty cool. It's not super great in-game, similar to the Delusion, but it's not terrible either. And uh, it's a really interesting ship, and of course it glows in the dark, so it's cool. And then here you have the rules, and then the checklist. Um, one interesting thing about the checklist is, um, might as well just open it because I already have a bunch anyway. So one really unique thing about the checklist for this set is that um, you'll see some numbers come up here. Um, you can see it says uh, Cannibal King, that's not in this set. So you, it, where the green triangles are, that's where things got funky. Uh, the Cannibal King is actually in the last set. It got delayed. Raptor Maw came out in the set right after this. Uh, Fire and Steel as like a limited edition, basically. Uh, the Mercury, the Polaris, the Speedy Return, and Terex are all in the set. Grinder and Soul Crusher both got uh, moved back. Um, or Grinder didn't, but anyway, Soul Crusher did. And then Ocho Brazo is probably the most infamous. Um, Ocho Brazo basically was a, um, it's basically like an octopus, so like the Krakens, but it was actually never produced. It got pushed back and then eventually it just kind of fell out of the following sets. So it, it's actually, it's on the checklist, but it doesn't exist. There's no physical Ocho Brazo in existence. That's kind of just a cool little thing about Rise of the Fiends. And also, um, so if you open a pack of this and start collecting a set, don't just go by the checklist because the checklist is kind of strange for this set because um, you're never going to find Ocho Brazo. There might, maybe there's a prototype somewhere, but it's doubtful. So that'd be cool if that showed up. But anyway, and then the other thing is the, the LEs here at the end, you can't get those in packs, but um, the ones with like the copper bronze triangle, those 200 through 211, those were only released with factory sets, I think. So they're like extremely rare, and those are um, some of the most expensive ships in the entire game, um, on par with pretty much any other ships in terms of price, outside of maybe a few of the Ten Masters, and then like the the stuff that's like super ridiculously rare, like the Raptor Ma and Obago Deuce and stuff like that. So, and then this is kind of they did start changing the start here rules. If you've seen them in other packs, it's a little bit darker. The theme, the theme of the start here rules changed a little bit, like the color scheme same rules but they changed how it looked a little bit which is kind of cool um as usually I like the older ones better but this is has a little bit of a color contrast which is nice so and then you see the dye is orange for this set which fits um i think they had already used a red one at that point so they wanted to change the color probably so that's my pack of rise of the fiends not a bad pack uh two english ships one of which is uh one of the best english gold runners in the entire game the aberdeen baron and then other than that, pretty average pack. But So that's one pack of Rise of the Fiends. This is A7X Fan Ben, and I'll see you later.